Uh, when did you realize something was wrong? Yeah, no, and, and, and Leah, I'd like to say thanks for all the well wishes that have come in. Uh, the a, a level of support from everybody across the globe has been amazing uh, in, in such a time. And so uh, thank you to everybody out there. Um, you know, so back to the question, when did we first know that something was wrong? Uh, you know, it was two minutes into the launch and everything was going, uh, uh, going per plan. It was a smooth ride. And uh, right around the first, uh, first stage separation, uh, everything went a little wry. And so we were tossed back and forth inside the capsule a little bit and then uh, and thrusted away from the rocket as soon as the launch abort system uh, had recognized there was a problem with the booster. Uh, so the first moment uh, that I recognized something was as we were being ripped away from the rocket. Uh, we had an alarm inside the capsule and we had a, an emergency light come on that said that uh, we had had a problem with the booster. Uh, and it was at that moment, uh, it was a pretty crystal clear realization that we weren't going to make it to orbit that day. You know how you're trained for facing these kind of psychological issues and keeping cool and not panicking whenever something, um, something goes awry. Right. So I, I've got to thank my, you know, my career in the Air Force has, has done a lot to help me prepare for stressful situations like this, uh, whether it's through deployments or my time in uh, flight test where we've had to deal with failures in aircraft that you're in and having to get down on the ground immediately. So those have been stressful situations. Uh, you know, in terms of uh, managing that, you really end up falling back to your training. You, you learn over time, over my two decades in the Air Force, I've learned that in, in those situations, uh, the best thing that you can do is stay calm and do what you've been trained to do. And so we train endlessly to address those types of, of situations. Uh, I've spent the better part of the last two years in Star City, Russia, inside a descent module where they have thrown every failure imaginable at us. And Alexei and I have developed the, the team the cohesion that we need to be able to respond to those failures. And, uh, and we put that to work when, we were, uh, uh, when that was thrown our way on Thursday. Your initial reaction, fear or disappointment? Um, you know, it, I just remember it being this, this, this very poignant uh, realization that, wow, we just had a failure of the booster. So there's a little bit of disbelief uh, because it hasn't happened in 35 years. So that was a little surprising. Uh, but it was, we just had a failure of the booster and, okay, now we got to get home. And so we just instantly transitioned into executing the procedures that we had practiced before and, uh, and trying to make sure that we did them as, as, as precise and as effectively as we could. And while in the Soyuz, uh, upon your descent, did you feel any temperature or pressure changes? Um, Yes, yeah, so when we, when we come back, uh, there are uh, pressure changes. So after the, the main chute opens, uh, there is a valve that helps equalize us uh, with the outside ambient air pressure. And so uh, you feel pressure changes in your ear on descent, just like you might feel uh, in, a, in a, a commercial airliner coming in for landing. Uh, other than that, there was no extreme temperatures. And if you look at pictures of our capsule laying on the, uh, the steps of Kazakhstan, uh, you realize that we weren't going fast enough for anything to char, to have any of the plasma that you would normally have uh, from a re-entry. We were going uh, slow enough, our energy was low enough uh, that it was really just aerodynamic drag that slowed us down. Wow, if this incident will keep you away from any flights or does it make you more determined to go up in the future? Yeah, so in terms of uh, determination, personal uh, perseverance, uh, uh, I'm ready to go and I uh, look forward to the next opportunity. Uh, we, you know, we collectively, my family, all of my friends, uh, extended family, everybody has invested and sacrificed a lot to make this opportunity happen. Uh, and uh, we all realize that it's a, it's a very hard business that we are a part of. Uh, you're not always going to be successful, uh, but you've got to persevere because what we're trying to accomplish with human exploration of space, uh, the things that we're trying to discover, the, the expanding the, you know, the, the boundaries of human understanding, that's what we're trying to do, and, and it's worth it. And so, yes, I'm, I'm ready to go. That's so what you will take from this experience that you can use for the future, um, both for personal experience and for sharing information with other astronauts and cosmonauts. 
Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I just yesterday we we tried to capture as much as we can, and and I've you know given a statement so that we can get all of the the insight from my experience and try to to propagate that towards other crew members uh, so that they can learn from my experience. That's important. Um, you know, personally, uh, I feel like this is just another. Uh, event that has happened that is going to help shape me and make me a more effective crew member in the future. I know that Alexei and I as a crew, uh, you know, we've, we've experienced this together and that's only going to make us a stronger crew in the future.